Hello dear friends, as you can see it is a beautiful bright sunny morning here in our little monastery of St. Francis in the South Lakes. I pray it's a sunny morning for you, but more importantly, I trust that there is more sunshine in your life than shadows, than dark nights. This is a heart reflection for those of you who may be struggling today, who may be hurting in your mind, in your body and spirit. You may be feeling adrift on an open sea where the waves are engulfing your raft. Take heart, for each one of us who embrace the spiritual path whether it is as a Buddhist, a Hindu, a Sikh, a Muslim, a Jew, a Christian, an agnostic, an atheist, a Wiccan or pagan. Religion has its place for those who need that structure, but for those like me, who lived many years within the Catholic Christian community, but now I'm free to embrace a loving God through nature, the Cathedral of God. This may upset some of you, especially if you're traditionalists, evangelicals, fundamentalists. But as a child of the light, a child of God, we are guided not to judge others. We are guided to welcome each child of God as a beloved and not sit in judgment. Sadly, Along my spiritual path, I guess I too am guilty of judging others. As a young Catholic nursing monk, I know I was brainwashed by a negative mindset. And it left me feeling wounded. At the time, I know I was deeply unhappy. And you would have thought, hey, a monk in service to God caring for the sick and the dying, unhappy. Yes, I was. When I look back now on the photographs of me in my habit, there was never a smile, because deep within my being, I lived in fear of God. And that fear was nurtured by the ideologies and the dogma and the fear that I was worthless, a sinner, and that I literally had to climb Mount Everest in my bare feet to win God's approval and acceptance. And I know that that mindset is prevalent in all of the world's religions, especially the Abrahamic faith of Jew, Muslim and Christian. But I do not subscribe to that ideology or dogma. My life is much simpler now. And I guess this came about through experiencing a complete mental health breakdown when I was a senior nurse in palliative care in 1996, when my best friend, also a brother monk, died of cancer aged 42. At the time, it didn't really hit me, but three months after his death, I guess I felt as if I was without a limb. I guess my right side was paralyzed, my heart closed down. And I found myself desperately struggling to stay alive. A depression kicked in that was deep. The tears were flowing freely and the dark night of the soul really took hold and that lasted many many months and my GP put me on the happy pill Prozac and it's through Prozac where I became a victim a survivor because the drug took away everything my life my status my health and introduced me to bipolar disorder 
and from then on, I guess I had a breakthrough. A breakthrough, yes, I did. My breakdown became my breakthrough because I had to learn to walk again. I had to learn to trust. And looking back, I thank God. Out of that awful tragedy came goodness, came meaning and a purpose for my life. And that's when I took the decision, divinely inspired, to come away from organized religion to honour and respect all beliefs, but to live a simpler life and find my God in nature, not in a building, but in the landscape, in the woodlands, by the sea. Are you living a non-lived life today? Are you struggling in your journey? Are you beset by troubles? Are you in an unhappy relationship where you feel trapped and can't go forward like I was? Are you struggling with illness where each day is an effort, even to getting out of bed? You know, I have to be truthful with you. I have fallen over many suitcases and handbags and the nurse was the rescuer but I never felt love and yet I would tell people I loved them but I was a hypocrite because I didn't really know what love meant and I certainly didn't love myself I despised myself I hated myself, I loathed myself. I never felt good enough because it all stemmed from childhood where I was put down as the eldest son of a large Catholic family. My father disapproved of me because I didn't go into the family business of poor butchering. I chose to follow my heart and go into a Catholic nursing community. But through my breakdown and managing depression every day, that is my only prayer to God. I offer my depression as a prayer. And isn't it strange, now as an older man, I can really love myself. Because when I love myself, I'm actually loving the God within me. A loving God who set me free from all that nonsense. And that's why I'm proud to be a member of Spiritual Networks, an amazing community online of men and women who are on a spiritual path, some looking for soulmates. I'm not. I found mine as a bride of Christ. Yes, that sounds really strange and kinky, but as a monk, I have given my life to God in service for peace, for unity, and that all faiths will embrace each other in love. Let us reflect on these few words that were the introduction to a great book by Donald Walsh. 98% of the world's peoples are spending 98% of their time on things that don't matter. Are you one of them? And I sense this is the reason why people all over the world are feeling a more than normal amount of challenge and disjointedness in their lives. As a nursing monk and now as a therapist, and as a, an interfaith Franciscan monk living a contemplative life, I have the privilege of meeting many beautiful people who come to the door looking for prayer. I receive hundreds of emails asking for a gentle word of support and would I keep them in my heart in prayer. Where many have lost loved ones, children, 
where many have lost a son or a daughter in Afghanistan, where some have been in service to God and couldn't cope anymore and had to leave. The list is endless. But today the reason why so many people are deeply unhappy because they've introduced a new God into their life to replace a God of love and it's called greed, materialism, selfishness. What has happened? Where have we gone wrong to live in such a beautiful world, a free gift from God that we should turn on each other and kill one another needlessly. The streets of America where they take guns and shoot you for the latest whim or fancy were terrorists like in London recently where a young soldier married with a young child was wearing a Healthy Hero t-shirt and was butchered in front of local people. Butchered. Where he was repeatedly stabbed in front of onlookers. Some were helpless. One lady wasn't. A German lawyer who was a tourist and went up to one of them who was brandishing the knife. He was a fundamentalist and a radicalist. And she said you could see the hate in his eyes. Where have we gone wrong? And in Syria, where the government and military are using chemical weapons on its own people and where one of the rebels who killed a man ripped open and took out his heart and took a bite from it. Why are we returning to these barbaric practices? Well my heart can only say that desolate is the whole world a desolate because no man thinks in his heart. For if we come back to our heart, our teacher, we will find within our heart the voice of the beloved God who won't condemn us, who won't insist that we become a born again Muslim or Christian or Jew, who will just ask us to surrender our heart to love and be led by a different set of rules such as truthfulness sincerity, honesty, integrity. And I guess that's why so many today are junkies of prescribed medication for depression, why many people are affected by all sorts of pain, insecurity, loneliness. Loneliness is a killer. You can be in a community as I was in a monastic community and you can be very lonely and cry yourself to sleep. You can be in a relationship where you know your partner has totally lost interest in your beauty and you can cry yourself to sleep. Or you suspect they're having an affair and you're afraid to confront them because you don't know how you'll cope on your own. Let me share this with you. There is help. But you have to initiate it, like I did. I had to get on my knees in the pouring rain and scream at God. In fact, I think, if, I, if my memory serves me rightly, I swore at God to help me. And he did. And within seven days, three amazing people were brought into my life who empowered me self-heal, take back my power and live a fun-filled, joy-filled life. Being a monk is not unhappy. I am happy. I have an inner peace. I've given everything away. I own nothing. But guess what? I have everything because my needs are met every day not my wants that's the trouble today people have wants they want a better house a better partner a better job better money if it's for your highest good God will give it to you but God only provides your needs 
but the society you and I live in has become a hedonistic society, pluralistic, where people eat not to survive, but have become gluttons. Come back to your heart. Your heart is your teacher. If I can help you in any way, email me. Or type in Monastery of St. Francis. It'll come up probably as the Celtic Assisi of the South Lakes. Or go to the Interfaith Franciscans website. Send me an email. I will listen and I am there to walk alongside you as a sleeping prayer partner. Namaste. Remember you're not alone. You have a named archangel and a guardian angel, a messenger of love, not religion, who was assigned to you from the moment you were born. Are you aware of that? Well, call on them.